Hello everyone. Um, here's a quick summary of uh, the API and microservices test automation training that we've been doing and wanted to show the quick progress. And that will also enable you to be able to uh, quickly get to practicing to where we are today. Um, and uh, as we complete a few more remaining sessions. So primarily in the first few days, we went through the basic fundamentals. We learned uh, all about the request responses, the primary uh, usages of APIs versus microservices um, and how we go about towards more restful based um, approach when it comes to our uh, HTTP uh, microservices or APIs. And this is where in day two we've uh, played around with some public APIs that are available for us through applications like Spotify developer or um, request.in um, and to understand the whole concept of uh, the basic API documentations, how a request gets uh, fulfilled and how a response is uh, sent back. So we went a little bit more deeper to understand the basic JSON data as a key value pair, how it is formatted for us uh, as humans to understand, but more easy for uh, the API or microservices to be able to interact or exchange between each other. Then we went about um, uh, at this point, I believe we uh, did a little bit of playing around with Java rest assured. So I'm sure that we would have done the same using Postman uh, in the day two where we played with all these uh, requests. And we quickly wanted to move more towards how we can do it at a programming level through Java Rest Assured. And that is when I believe we switched more documentation or focus towards um, Eclipse. And here's a quick look at what we did. We started with a very basic uh, core Java program for people to get started. Um, a very simple API program, the one of the first one in Java Rest Assured, which primarily does a very simple get call to google.com. Uh, we are not even doing a, a full uh, endpoint URL in this case. And we all we are talking about is how we have used Rest Assured and request specification to be able to send my response uh, select the method of the response and be able to get a response back uh, for which we went about expanding more uh, to doing it with um, publicly available API URLs and where we also can get our status code, um, the body as a string, the response time it is taken uh, back at our script level. Um, we have also experimented with the options of patch and delete as commands, uh, then the post and put. And uh, we went through uh, experimenting with how we can talk about the input payloads of JSON coming in different formats, either as string and then we use a JSON parser to convert it as and when we need to do a post command. Uh, should be somewhere here, yeah. So we're parsing that data and changing it uh, for it to be able to recognize in the response or it could be going as a JSON object itself where we put data individually at a script level. So that gives us a lot of power into parameterization or we could be having our input data coming in from a JSON payload uh, that's there as a .json file stored externally and we read the file and parse it into our request. Now that was uh, the initial playing around with rest assured to be able to understand how we can do the various commands um, and also the payloads and how we are uh, getting the different responses and what we are doing with it. What we went about with the next part of it is uh, we wanted to build a framework, a simple framework that is uh, more Excel driven and that is where eventually I believe we came up with this template where we created a list of tests that I want to run. Each one being an independent test by itself. You can group them as keywords or as collections and keep them separate. I have an execute flag that tells my framework if I want to run this or not. I am providing what command is 
uh, the request for the URI, any payload uh, as a data in here itself. I'm also talking about what I'm expecting back as a status code. That is my expected response. If you have a response body, that is something you want to check. Um, or if you want to put an upper time limit of what you want to check as a response time, are some um, verifications that you would want to put in your test. And then comes your actual response post which we can say that, okay, this test passed or failed for us. So that's primarily a template that was created. Now what the framework primarily does is navigates through this, understands what it needs to do and be able to execute the same. So back here, what we have is, um, we've actually read this Excel sheet using a read Excel uh, reusable method that we have. We're navigating through the entire rows and columns to be able to get what command URI I need. And then I'm, depending on if it's a get or a post, just doing a basic print. Uh, but I think we went on to build a little bit more sophisticated version where um, we have um, the results also going back to a results file we've put an execute command as a reusable method uh, that helps us to better organize our code. And also for verifying result, uh, we've moved that into another block method. And in execute command, we primarily use the switch case. Uh, depending on the command, uh, we are deciding our uh, method. And if it is a post, I need to also send the uh, body along with uh, the method being post and so on for delete put and patch as well. Uh, verify result primarily whatever we're getting as the expected and whatever I've got as the actual are being compared and based on which I'm deciding if my result is a pass or a fail. And uh, so through that basic version of the framework execution, uh, we could get some decent results going something like this, where whatever I've selected, it either tells me it's a pass or a fail. And if it's a fail, we get to see why and how um, is it actually a fail. If we wrote some positive tests, some negative tests for it to fail, uh, primarily to make sure that a, a simple framework like this can be easily deployable and created. Um, post which we went on to work with uh, Karate as another additional framework that has become very popular in the market, an open source uh, solution built on uh, the concepts of Cucumber and BDD. And uh, we could easily write our karate tests within Eclipse. Uh, it's primarily a Maven dependency that helps me to import the karate JUnit 5 package uh, as a needed dependency. That's what I primarily need if it's only that in this case. And then what we do is we write feature files that talks about uh, stories of what we want to execute. Uh, every feature having one or more scenarios, each scenario having a gherkin syntax, which talks to me about a given situation uh, when there's an additional situation that happens or a condition, then you do a specific validation or comparison at that time or an action. So these uh, simple commands inbuilt with karate keywords like URL method status, uh, response, response status, headers, cookies, helps us to get into uh, those additional parameters as well. So it gives us a very easy way to write and maintain scenarios or tests. And post execution, you basically get um, I don't know if I've got a recent one here. A decent HTML report that lets you take a look at how the execution has happened and so on. Uh, so we have done our basic installations and we've uh, worked a little bit. Now we're going to go a little bit more advanced into Karate. Uh, there are a few more options that we need to learn about. We're going to do a little bit of mock API testing where we also uh, start looking at uh, cookies 
header uh, we look at you know how we do some token authentication that will be required uh, because as you do a lot of microservice executions you'll understand that um, you'll have uh, many series of uh, steps to execute uh, and where you'll have to carry your token uh, forward to be able to uh, give you the permission to handle that specific request so that's something we'll look at and then we'll compare all these frameworks that we have looked at we'll also take a quick peek into cucumber rest assured uh, karate api once we've done this you should be able to compare it also with the eniot which is an excel driven ui and api framework Finally, we will do a closure with CI/CD um, on how we can execute our frameworks, our tests in a continuous testing uh, manner, uh, so that eventually you have everything getting triggered either from Jenkins and maintained nicely in GitHub repositories uh, that can be accessible across the um, testing org. So that's about where we are, team, uh, and uh, we should be able to complete this in the next three days. And for the videos, uh, everything is being hosted on itln.com. So if you visit there, go to all courses and sign up, um, you would actually see it right at the top, mostly um, under API, yeah, Web Services, SOAP, API, and everything is here. So there will be multiple chapters in it. Uh, the ones which we are doing is out here. And um, anything additional that uh, you see are from uh, earlier tutorials, but primarily good, rich content on various other topics. All right, everyone, that's it for now. I uh, hope I could give a quick short summary. It wasn't short, but I had to show you what all we did so far. So you have a good idea on it. And uh, we'll touch base with you next time. Take care. Bye now.